have dream chase for it simulate me now uh, but then make it happen come on and start in Australia with AMVPS let's make your future bright with AMVPS they got migration education I'm gonna pay my apples now AMVPS I'm gonna If you have a dream, chase for it. Sim on now, I will then make it. Visit our website, amvpsolutions.info and Facebook page, Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions. If you have dream, chase for it, simulate me now, but then make it happen. If you have a dream, chase for it. Simulan mo nang abutin. Make it. Visit our website, amvpsolutions.info, and Facebook page, Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions. If you have a dream, chase for it. Simulan mo nang abutin. Visit our website, amvpsolutions.info, and Facebook page, Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions. If you have dream, chase for it, simulate me now, but then make it happen.
solutions.info and Facebook page Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions. One of the best feelings in life is having moments with the ones you love even if you're far away from each other. Despite being a thousand miles apart, our feelings haven't changed. AMVPS. First, legal. Second, migration. Third, education. We cater student visas, visitor visas, spouse visas, fiancé visas, general skilled visas, and employer sponsored visas. Aside from offering affordable services, Australia Migration and Visa Professional Solutions render genuine service to its clients. We operate here in the Philippines and also in Melbourne, Australia. Once again, this is Attorney Edmund Cyril S. Galvez, an Australian registered migration agent, inviting everyone to hire our services. You may call us through this number, 0414-709-110, or send us an email through this address, ozmigrationvisasolutions at gmail.com, or you may also visit our Facebook page, Aussie Migration and Visa. Three words, AMVPS. First, we...
visit our website, amvpsolutions.info and Facebook page, Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions. One of the best feelings in life is having moments with the ones you love, even if you're far away from each other. Despite being a thousand miles apart, our feelings haven't changed. Three words, AMVPS. First, legal. Second, migration. Third, education. We cater student visas, visitor visas, spouse visas, fiancé visas, general skill visas, and employer-sponsored visas. Aside from offering affordable services, Australia Migration and Visa Professional Solutions render genuine service to its clients. We operate here in the Philippines and also in Melbourne, Australia. Once again, this is Attorney Edmund Cyril S. Galvez, an Australian registered migration agent, inviting everyone to hire our services. You may call us through this number, 0414-709-110, or send us an email through this address, ozmigrationvisasolutions at gmail.com, or you may also visit our Facebook page, Aussie Migration and Visa. Three words. If you have a dream, chase for it, simulating up, but then make it happen. Come on and study in Australia with AMVPS. Let's make your future bright with AMVPS. We got migration, education, from out of paper, I'll put AMVPS, I'm the If you have a dream, chase for it. Simulan mo na ang abutin. Make it happen. We can reach your family in Australia with AMVPS. Make your future bright with AMVPS. Design migration, education, pangarap ay maabot na AMVPS. Ang kasama. Visit our website, amvpsolutions.info and Facebook page, Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions. One of the best feelings in life is having moments with the ones you love, even if you're far away from each other. Despite being a thousand miles apart, our feelings haven't changed.
Three words, AMVPS. First, legal. Second, migration. Third, education. We cater student visas, visitor visas, spouse visas, fiancé visas, general skilled visas, and employer-sponsored visas. Aside from offering affordable services, Australia Migration and Visa Professional Solutions render genuine service to its clients. We operate here in the Philippines and also in Melbourne, Australia. Once again, this is Attorney Edmund Cyril S. Galvez, an Australian Registered Migration Agent, inviting everyone to hire our services. You may call us through this number, 0414-709-110, or send us an email through this address, ozmigrationvisasolutions at gmail.com, or you may also visit our Facebook page, Aussie Migration and Visa. Good day, everyone. Thank you for attending today's information session about Australian nursing. I know it's already late, but I appreciate your time for joining our information session today. We will be discussing to you the registration requirements, the skills assessment requirements, and also the visa pathways for nurses. To help us understand the nursing registration. We will be hearing the um, experiences and the talk of Ms. Yandi Ritual. Ms. Yandi Ritual is a uh, law student here in Australia. I meet her during my practice ready program in compliance with my registration requirements as a registered migration agent. My great my um my partner Yandi Ritual was once registered with with Mara, but now she decided to focus on her nursing profession. She is working as a registered nurse in a hospital. So Yandi Ritual will give us insights, detailed process about the registration requirements. After that, I will be giving you um, the information about skills assessment. As to visa pathways, we have decided to give you the discussion next week as it will be a very lengthy discussion. And after the skills assessment, we will be hearing testimonies from a Filipino nurse here in Australia. She will be giving you insights experiences about how it is to work in Australia and also from the employer's side, we'll be hearing a uh, talk from one of the uh, assistant nurse unit manager in a hospital. So thank you so much for attending once again and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, you, Sir Edmund. Edmund. Good evening, everyone. For tonight's information session, we will be discussing steps to Australian nursing registration, as well as the skills assessment process as per the Australian Nursing and Midwifery Council. To start with, this slide shows the three stages to migrating to Australia as a registered nurse. 
The first one is uh, to get your nursing registration through APRA and the NMBA. And then um, you, you have to get a positive skills assessment through the ANMAT. And the third one is your visa pathways once you have successfully gained your letter of this determination from the ANMAT. These are the common acronyms you may encounter throughout the process. First is APRA or Australian Health Practitioner Regulation Agency, ANMAC or the Australian Nursing and Midwifery Accreditation Council, the NMBA or the Nursing Midwifery Board of Australia, IQNM, Internationally Qualified Nurses and Midwives, OBA or OBA, Outcomes-Based Assessment, OSCE or the Objective Structured Clinical Exam. For our first day, stage, which is the nursing registration, you will be dealing with APRA. As listed here, APRA oversees 15 national boards, and one of them is the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Australia. The NMBA has the following functions. They develop standards, codes, and guidelines for the nursing and midwifery profession. They handle notifications, complaints, investigations, and disciplinary hearings. They also assess overseas trained practitioners who wish to practice in Australia, and they approve accreditation standards and accredited courses of study. As of this year, the NMBA has made some changes, and now I would like to show you this diagram to give you an overview of what you need to do to obtain your Australian nursing registration. As you can see here, the first thing you have to do is to complete the self-check in APRA website. Once completed, you will be advised as to what stream you belong to, stream A, stream B, and stream C, and the succeeding steps depend on your stream. For this presentation, I will be focusing mainly on stream B, this one. Note that those who studied in the UK, USA, and Canada will most likely fall under stream A. All right. Who should complete the self check? All right, only the internationally qualified nurses and midwives should complete the self-check. Who should not complete the self-check? A third party or agent on your behalf, let's say the migration agent, they cannot uh, complete it for you. The second one, individuals who have completed the NMBA approved nursing or and or or midwifery qualification in Australia. Let's say those who um, did the conversion program, they don't need to do the self-check. The third one is nurses or midwives who are currently registered as a nurse or midwife in a New Zealand council. They have a dip different pathway to get the registration here. All right, note that this self-check is free of charge. As mentioned previously, upon completion of the self-check, you will be advised if they are a stream A, B, or C, or if APRA needs to assess their qualifications before assigning a stream. Each stream has different number of steps or assessment stages to be completed by international nurses before they are eligible to apply for registration. Stream A and B who choose to proceed in the assessment process are considered to be candidates. The candidate must pay an IQNM assessment fee of 640 Australian dollars or roughly or roughly 23,000 pesos, and this is non-refundable, okay? You will pay that to APRA.
all IQNMs who wish to regist register and work in Australia as RNs must complete an orientation to the Australian healthcare system. There are two parts to the orientation. The first one is orientation part one, which is to be completed before registration with APRA. And part two, which must be completed after you get your registration from APRA. Those fall under stream A and B will proceed directly to the orientation part one. While stream A can apply for registration right after the orientation part one, those under stream B will get a referral from APRA to begin the OBA process. All right, so stream A, going to pay the assessment fee of $640. And then he or she will need to do the orientation part one. Once completed, they can um, apply for the registration, all right? While stream B, most likely Philippine nurses, um, need to pay the assessment fee of the same amount, do the same orientation part one, and then they cannot apply for registration yet because they have to go through these three um, stages first, okay, which I will discuss in a, in a minute. Let's go back. Hmm. All right. What is the orientation part one? This is an online learning course that can be completed from the candidate's uh, personal device, such as your own computer or tablet. All right. You will learn through a combination of reading videos and interactive content. Know that for Stream B candidates, the information you will learn will be particularly useful if you see the multiple choice questions exam in the Objective Structured Clinical Exam or OSCE, where your knowledge, skills, and other attributes in nursing or midwifery in, in the Australian healthcare context will be assessed. Candidates must complete orientation part one within 90 days from creating their account after completing self-check in order to progress to. Again, if you're stream A, after orientation part one, you just go straight to a, a registration application. All right, and then if you are um, under stream B, once you finish your orientation part one, you need to create your portfolio first. Okay. Upon completion of the orientation part one, Stream B candidates must complete a portfolio, as I have mentioned. And Keep in mind that this can be, be done through the APRA website. At this stage, you will be asked to upload certified copies of official documentations for all qualifications relevant to the candidate's profile or portfolio, such as the copy of course certificate awarded, or in the Philippines, we call it your college diploma. You also need to provide a copy of academic transcript or your transcript of record, an evidence of any change of name, like your marriage certificate, and then the, your proof of identity, like the biometric page of your passport. Uh, 
Okay. If applicable, an evidence of passing the National Council licensure examination for RN or NCLEX RN within 10 years from establishing their portfolio must also be uploaded. All right. If up APRA determines that the information and documentation provided at the portfolio stage matches the information provided by the candidate at self-check, the Stream B candidates will be advised to continue to the next assessment stage. However, if APRA determines that the qualification, information, and documentation provided at the portfolio stage does not match the information provided by the candidate at self-check, APRA will investigate and advise the candidate of the next step. As mentioned before, APRA will provide you a referral to take the outcome, outcomes-based assessment or OBA. OBA has two parts. The first one is the multiple choice questions or the NCLEX. The second one is the Objective Structured Clinical Exam, or OSCE. What is the MCQ exam? I have been shown, mentioned it repeatedly. This is also known as NCLEX RN. And this is a computer-based and is delivered at dedicated test centers. The, Nas the National Council of State Boards of Nursing develops and delivers the NCLEX RN through person view test centers in most countries. Again, those who had NCLEX results within 10 years from establishing their, their portfolio must be uploaded uh, together with other uh, qualification documents. Note that the NMBA does not run any preparatory course for OSCE and your MCQ. For, for RNs, the NCLEX registration fee is 200 US dollars plus an additional of international scheduling fee of 150 US dollars um, or total of 350 US dollars. Um, as you may be aware, there are several NCLEX RN preparatory courses available in the Philippines. I won't mention any of them. Um, part of the OBA is the OSCE or the Objective Structure, Structured Clinical Exam. What is an OSCE? This is a clinical exam to assess the candidate's knowledge, skills, and competence at a graduate level nurse or midwife from an Australian um, NMBA approved program of study. And this is also managed by APRA and is delivered at the Adelaide Health Simulation Center in Adelaide, South Australia. You will be required to come to Australia to sit for your, your OSCE. And you have to make sure that you you have a um, proper visa. Again, international qualified nurses and midwives who have been referred to the OBA must pass the MCQ exam first before you can attempt the OSCE. The exam fee is fourteen uh, four. Thousand Australian dollars or 140,000 pesos, just roughly. Again, there is no OSCE preparatory courses provided by Adelaide Health Simulation or the NMBA or APRA. However, there are some private institutions in the Australia in Australia that offers preparatory program. Some of them run for 12 weeks with a minimum cost of 4,500 US uh, Australian dollars rather, or roughly 158,000 pesos. And that is for the MCQ only. 
and then another six weeks with a minimum of five thousand five hundred um, Australian dollars, or roughly one ninety three thousand pesos for the OSCE. You may contact those institutions directly if you have any inquiries. So what is the next step after you pass both MCQ and OSCE exam? Well, you are now ready to apply for your nursing registration. When you launch your application and your supporting documentation by post, uh, send it to uh, this address in Victoria. Alternatively, you can launch your application for registration and supporting documentation in person and at any APRA in the state or territory in which you plan to live and work. Um, application by email is not accepted due to original signature requirements. Note that applying for registration does not guarantee that you meet the standards of registration. Granting registration is a decision of the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Australia. The NMBA and APRA rely on the supporting documentation submitted with your application form to accurately assess your application for registration. You must ensure that all supporting documents meets the APRA certification and translation guidelines. The nursing board views fraud very seriously and will carefully review the evidence you provide to support your application. If you provide false or misleading documents with your application, the NMBA will refuse your registration because you are not a fit and proper person for general registration. If the nursing board becomes aware of fraud in your application after you have been registered, you may have your registration canceled, okay? For APRA to assess your application, applicants must provide all the following evidence your application cannot be assessed until all of these documents has been received. The documentation supplied by you includes, as I've mentioned before, uh, official documentation for qualifications, such as college diploma and your transcript of record, evidence of any change name, proof of identity, a statement of service from your employers covering the past five years uh, or your employment certificate, a signed and dated CV or resume that describes your full practice history and any training undertaken, a copy of your uh, English language test, like your IELTS, occupational English test, or Pearson, or PTE, all right, the documentation supplied di directly to APRA from regulatory authorities includes certificate of registration status, which must include details of your standing or certificate of good standing from every jurisdiction outside of Australia in which you are currently or have previously been registered in during the past five years. Those certificates must be valid for three months. Let's say uh, you practice in the Philippines, so you have to uh, get your course and COGS from uh, PRC. And if you work in KSA or Saudi Arabia, then you have to arrange, arrange that as well. So remember that um, the regulatory authority must... Uh, send it directly to APRA, okay? Sub once the, all the documents uh, is submitted um, together with the completed application form, you must pay a non-refundable registration fee. How long will it take uh, for them to process your registration? 
you know, APRA aim to complete the assessment of an international application within four to six weeks of receipt of all required documentation. However, um, some may take um, eight to 10 weeks to process. All right, so you can help avoid unnecessary delays in processing your application by making sure that your application is complete and that you provide all supporting documents required. Um, you may also request documentation from third par parties in advance to avoid delay. Again, APRA do not st start assessing applications until all required documentation has been received. All right, so after the registration, you have to complete the orientation part two. Um, all right. It must be completed after you, re you registered with the NMBA and it is a requirement for all the internationally qualified nurses and midwives who register with the nursing board to complete part two within six months of becoming registered. Once you are registered with the NMBA, you will be given access to the online module and it will take two to three hours to complete the entire module. We recommend that you allow enough time to read all the information in the module thoroughly and to read the suggested further reading. While you do not have to complete the module in one sitting, you can save your progress and resume it later. If you do not complete the orientation part two within the six months of registering with the NMBA, you may be unable to renew your registration with the NMBA until you complete the module. Just keep that in mind. All right. And that's the end of my presentation about the Australian nursing registration process. Okay, we will now move on to the stage two of how to migrate to Australia as registered nurse topic. And that is the skills assessment procedure. Um, Sir Edmund Galvez will be presenting uh, um, the stage two or the assessment process. All right. Um, all right, everyone, thank you for your time and good luck on your application. Um, I'll see you next time. So once again, good, good day. My name is Edmund Galvez. I am one of the registered migration agents of AMVPS. So now we will be discussing about the skills assessment process. I will share to you my screen. Um, I got this note when I was having my CPD with Legal Training Australia. And as you can see, you have here the steps in making application for skills assessment. The first step is for you to arrange verification of registration. And this should be emailed to verification at anmac.org.au. Now, what's the purpose of this um, verification of registration? The purpose is to confirm your registration, good standing, and fitness to practice as a nurse. And there is no exception to this. It must be done for every country or jurisdiction where you have been registered. If email is not available, that it can be through post, through this address. And the next would be for you to provide the ANMAC. The ANMAC is the Skills Assessing Authority for Nurses with the English language test number and the date of completion from the test provider. You must meet the minimum requirements prior to applying for this full skills assessment. Now, what is the minimum? What are the minimum requirements? for English language test. As you can see, 
the English language requirements for ANMAC can be done through OET, PTE, or IELTS. Now let's discuss about IELTS because this is the most common one. Now the requirement for English for IELTS academic test is that the applicant must achieve a minimum overall score of seven and a minimum score of seven in each of the four components, the listening, reading, writing, or speaking. And take note, there are two instances where you can submit this result. Number one, if you obtain this result in one sitting, then there's no problem. But what if you fail to meet the, requir the required minimum? Now, you can submit for a maximum of two test sittings in a six-month period, provided that you have achieved the following. Number one, a minimum overall score of seven in each sitting and no score in any component of the test is below 6.5. I can share you my notes after this um, Facebook Live orientation. And then next would be the documents that you need to submit to support your application. Now, what are these documents? These are the proof of identity, such as a government ID, a, the biostatistical page of your passport, and if you are married, the change of name documents, and also an official passport-sized photograph taken in the last six months. As to the graduate certificate and transcript, it must include commencement and completion dates. We call this as completion letter, as well as the theory and practice hours. If the university cannot provide this information, then ANMAC requires a copy of the syllabus to be posted directly to them. And also the most important part is the professional reference. There is a template that I can show you so that you will know how should this be organized? Just hold on a second. So sorry for the delay. So this is the template. This is from Skilled Migration Services Professional Reference Example by ANMAP. So as you can see, there are certain requirements that should be on the professional reference. Number one is that it should have the official letterhead and must include the contact details such as the address, telephone number, email, and website. It must also contain the date when the letter was issued and also the address to unmap to whom the letter should be sent. And then the name of the applicant and then afterward, it must contain a brief overview. And in that portion, it must state that the applicant is employed as a nurse. And the commencement date or the dates of employment, full-time, part-time capacity. And then the most important part is the body of reference. It must detail the following. The ward setting. And then 
details of nursing work undertaken in this setting. And then the example of competence in carrying out the nursing work. The brief comment on continuing professional development and should at least be two paragraphs of detailed information. And there's a note here that the ANMAC uses these professional references to make recommendation to the Department of Immigration. They must be explicit and reflect your nursing role accurately for ANMAC to make the correct decision. So this document is very important and vital to your application. And yes, of course, you need to uh, the, the maker of this document should put his name, signature, and position, and must also state his designation. Now, what are the types of document that ANMAC would not accept? Number one, the employment is less than three months full-time equivalent. <clears throat> Pay slips, generalized job descriptions, performance review documents, and if you want to claim extra points for your visa, they will not review less than one year work experience in Australia, less than three years work experience overseas, and references that relate to work experience over 10 years ago. Now let's go back with the checklist. <clears throat> Most Filipinos will fall under the modified plus assessment. So, <coughs> Um, checklist, as I mentioned, a copy of the passport biodata, passport sized photo, change of name document, if you're married. Most importantly, your graduate certificates from all nursing qualifications and the completion letter. And also for your work experience, the professional reference, and also this document, letter from AFRA. Notice of in principal approval of registration subject to proof of identity that must be issued within the last six months. And also the agent declaration form. And let's go back to My notes. There you go. <clears throat> now we, we've discussed about modified plus skills assessment requirements. So after verification, you will know, you will determine what are the available pathways for skills assessment purposes. You have three, but most Filipinos will fall under the modified plus skills assessment. The criteria for this is if you are not registered in Australia as a registered nurse or a registered midwife, but hold a current letter of notice of in principle approval of registration, subject to proof of identity from AFRA, then you are qualified for the modified plus skills assessment. The new assessment model is um, the outcome-based assessment. As to the fees, uh, after completing self-check, you will need to pay a non-refundable assessment fee of 640 Australian dollars. And then self-check assessment for OBA, usually Filipinos will fall under group B. Or those internationally qualified nurses who are assessed as holding for a qualification that is relevant, but not substantially equivalent or based on similar competencies to an Australian approved qualification. So we've already discussed the skills, the English language requirement, the passport, the needed 
documents and the professional reference. Now, the next step would be to create an online account with UNMAC for the relevant skills assessment pathway. And then afterwards, the fees for, for modified plus skills assessment, the skills assessment fee is 340 Australian dollars. And um, I think that's all. So I'll send you back to Miss Yandi Ritual for further information. Thank you. Bye bye. Working as an associate nurse unit manager has allowed me to grow both as a nurse and as an individual. It has given me great opportunities to develop my clinical leadership and management skills and is still continuing to do so. Nursing is such a rewarding and fulfilling profession. In Australia, nursing skills are enhanced in the best healthcare facilities. It offers diverse opportunities and flexible working arrangements. Nursing is such Filipino nurses are very hardworking, flexible, and works well with the team. We are very compassionate and dedicated to our profession, and we possess an immense physical and inner strength, which is uh, an important attribute in the field of nursing. Hello everyone. Hello sa tanang mga taga Davao o sa tanang mga taga Mindanao. Um, my name is Catherine. Um, I'm res residing currently here in Townsville, Queensland, Australia. So I was asked by my friend to um, answer a few questions about um, living and working here in Australia. So she, these are the questions that she asked me. But before I proceed to answering them, I would like to tell you a little background about myself. myself. So, um, I'm originally from Pulomolok, South Cotabato. Um, if you haven't heard of that place, it's just about 30 minutes um, drive from General Santa City. So um, in 2010, my husband and I came here to Australia um, on a student visa. So I was the principal uh, student visa holder and then she, he came under my visa. Um, so I took nursing course. Uh, it took me two years to finish the course because they gave me one year credit for my previous um, educational back background. So um, I did physiotherapy back in the Philippines. So they gave me one year credit for that one. So instead of doing three years in nursing, I was able to finish it in two years. Um, and then after I finished the course, I applied for a graduate visa because my student visa was finishing. So I had to um, apply uh, another visa to be able to stay in the country. And um, while I was on the graduate visa, um, I applied straight away for a permanent residency. So the graduate visa, I barely used it. So maybe about um, three months, um, so while I was on that visa, applied and go uh, permanent residency for me and my husband. And then for 23 days, so 23 days, um, we got approved of the visa. So paspas na kayo siya. And um, a year after that, uh, we applied for citizenship. So, um, and then the rest was history. So paspas na kayo among um, progression of our visa. So um, um, going back to the question. So the first question is, I know on working conditions and numerations ng Australian registered nurse in relation to working hours, leave benefits, salary, and um, allowances. So, um, a nursing job there in Australia is uh, comparable to a um, nursing job worldwide. So you could be working in a different areas like um, hospitals or public or private um, 
institution you can be working in um, nursing home or clinics or community but the working hours um, they could differ differ so um, you could um, opt to work if gusto ni mo full time if you want to work six um, days in a fortnight so fortnight there is kinsina so if you be you could be working six days long in in two weeks or two days long in two weeks so you could be regular permanently doing two shifts long or dua ka dua ka mong trabaho sa dua ka semana so um it's pretty um stable job so nursing job here is one of the um stable job here in australia and with the salary talking about salary um nurses are really i could say paid well um so the hourly rate is for first year entry is about 36 dollars and 55 cents so if the exchange rate i think the exchange rate now is about 34 um pesos in one Australian dollar. So if you do the math, um, you could be earning about 1,250 in one hour. So imagine 1,250 in one hour. So if you multiply that, say in a month, you could be earning um, maybe about 140,000. And then um, and then there are other penalties penalties for working like say um, if you work weekend if you work in the afternoon shift or night shift and then there's career leave and there's educational leave and there's um, stress leave so if you feel stressed you just tell your manager and then I think um, you be approved by your uh, your doctor that you're really stressed and then you can get uh, stress leave um, also on top of that a uh, Napajoy um, clothing allowance now by um, laundry allowance and every year you will get yearly increments or yearly increase of your salary um, but the thing here is uh, the work here is not easy busy so so um, you have to work your pay so and um, so now we can proceed to question number two paano mo mailalarawan ang cost of living sa Australia um, as to the um, cost of living in Australia it could be it can be quite expensive here so according to the world data information to Google um, Australia is ranked ranked number 14 now as to the um, most costly uh, country to live in so number one is Cayman Island I don't know where is that but uh, so Australia was is ranked number 14 um, which is this uh, this country Australia is more expensive to live in than in Canada or 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 America so America was ranked number 21 and then canada um number 20 so it's quite expensive to live here pero kaya kayo if if you're working as a nurse a registered nurse um kaya lang kaisha although the they said the um average living cost um for a family is about nearly five thousand and then for a single individual could be about two thousand um but then if you're a nurse and you're earning about four thousand a year i mean four thousand a month then then if you have a partner so times two or you can you can still save a little bit so it's it's livable here um question number three paano mo mailarawan ang quality of life so australia in relation to government tax relationship with other co-employees and supervisors recreational activities and transportation so um as to the quality of life here in australia all i could say is um work 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 holiday 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 and in between so what i mean is um work ka sa work and then work pag ka sa pagabuti mong balay because so work 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 <laughs> however you will have a motivation to work because you will be looking forward to your holiday so 
because you have a resources na kay korta to spend for holiday so you can go anywhere you can go mostly the day um go overseas aside from going back to the philippines for holiday um people here would go europe um, other country going for a cruise um even short holiday so kaya kaya lang mangud siya financially and because you you will be burnt out if you don't go for holiday and because you have resources why not um so talking about tax um every single individual here in australia are being taxed so um and they also have income bracket meaning um, the more you earn must ask for emo tax but you can see where your tax go so ang mga facilities diri mga um, pool mga beaches um, public toilets um and they're all mostly mostly good uh public and um wala joy bayad so mga public parks ang mga swimming pool guapo good geisha and ano um the facilities so dili ka mobile o dili ka mobile for toilet paper okay so um next and uh, we can talk about cars so cars um it is a necessity here so um, for you to be able to be efficient with your work and um, to be convenient, you need to have a car. So um, now my public transport like buses, um, Uber, taxi or trains, but um, you could save a lot if you have your own car. Anyway, um, affordable na kayang car dere. Mahal po siya if you convert to peso, but um, it's, you can, you can, uh, so, okay, like, easy lang kayo magka car. So, um, you guys nga dream mo mag drive, mag car, and tumo dari kay barato ang car. Sayun lang kayo. Um, and uh, about their healthcare. So, I think um, Australia has um, one of the best healthcare um, so far uh, because. Once you become a permanent resident here, you will be eligible for a Medicare. That means all your healthcare services um, are free. So um, they have a, a public hospitals. Um, all even even your I know even your um, uh, consultation lang as outpatient it's free. Even your mga X-rays ni mo all diagnostics nila pwede po siya free. Um, but if you're on other visa. Um, you need to have a private health, but um, you who wouldn't want to stay in a I know in in not a permanent visa. So we will all work out to be permanent if you plan to go, if you plan to live in Australia. So plan to be, strive to be permanent um, resident or citizen. If if mogine mo target, why not? So you can uh, be free from um, hospital um, services. Otherwise, it will be very very expensive kung naka mahal ang private health and then we can proceed to the last question which is ano ang naranasan mong mga positive and challenging experiences bago ka naging stable bilang isang nurse sa Australia so um so when we arrive here on a student visa um we all know that being on a student visa, you will have um, heaps of um, restrictions, especially with working. So if you're on a student visa, you're allowed only to work 20 hours per week. So gamay na kayo siya. So you can, you can work only um, duha lang ka 8 hours shift because that will be 16, hour, 16 shifts already. So kung 8 hours shift imong work in a day, so duha ka adlaw lang per semana um, which is gamay kaayo and um, if you're um, financing your own um, tuition fee uh, medyo lisud lisud siya pero um, doable or good if if you have a partner or if you have um, a relative here to help you um, kaya lang siya aguanta lang gamay pero um, kaya man kaya gapon siya so when we arrive here um, siyempre, pobre. Pobre pa may kay limited ang hours of work. So, my husband and I, um, 
we work hard, we work smart. Um, so if you work night, if we work night shift, we would be earning better than working in the daytime. So ako night shift ko permanente, and I chose to work weekend. So work smart para nilke ka po yung ko yung kita. Then, um, so we couldn't afford a car. Nilik mika afford a private transport kay simply mahal kain tushun. Then, they put me a food of, of nice accommodation or house. So, um, that time, my husband and I, we rented uh, in a shared house. That means, shared house means you, we lived with other people in the house. So, it's comfortable, but it's cheaper, man. And then, we're not thinking of our comfort. We were thinking, anyway, this is just um, temporary. So, we thought, oh, lang taga mai. So... We stayed in a single room with a single bed. Odiba. So dili mi kasi sa bed. So dito mi sa salog gatulog. And um we we never dwell into I know um self pity cuz we know that this is just temporary. And so while we're studying, we just back in the Philippines when we study, study regta, tong college ta Atong parents, they, they're the ones that working for for us para maka-eskwela ta, kita, eskwela lang yun ta. But in here, you have to work while you have to study. So, full-time student, part-time um, working. Kaya you have to, you have to pay, like for us, um, we're the ones who paid for our um, tuition fee. So, aguantag, aguantag yun, dili kay mitig laag, di kay mitig kaon sa gawas. But we know that all the all those were just temporary. So um for not too long and next time is a single bed, um maybe about three months long we we were promoted promoted. Um so one one queen bedroom size bed um I know where uh, vacant so we transferred there so okay now queen size uh, bed na room which is dako dako na until I finish um uni and then um our landlord has I know has um uh asked they've asked us nga if we want to I know to um anyway, we want to take over the the house uh to become landlord so me so it's a big house with six um six bedroom with a swimming pool but yeah swimming pool so we became landlord which is good but uh, my husband were the ones to uh he made sure that all the rooms are occupied but uh, uh, expenses um ma ano ma uh, tanan expenses mga pay sa rent um, makaya lang so um, that time while we were landlord of the of the house we were not paying rent adba. so um, what happened was we were able to save money so one year lang after I finished um, nursing uh, we were able to save money and we were able to buy a house adiba bongga and um, but uh, um, along the way like during those times, there are hardships, good. Um, but uh, we were, like, we keep telling ourselves, nga, sige lang, this is, uh, this is not permanent. This is just temporary um, hardship or suffering or discomfort. Pero um, we try not to dwell on those negative thoughts, but just to um, keep going, pursuing our dreams. And sa kaloy sa ginoo, um, with all um, his help and his blessings and answering our prayers, um, we'll be able to, we were able to um, achieve our goals. That is to become permanent here in Australia and um, to be able to um, pay off uh, our annotation fee. Okay, kita ba as a student here in Australia, we were not allowed to um, pay installment. We have to pay up front. Like, in the beginning of the semester, you have to pay up front. You have to pay for the whole semester fee. So, dili siya pwede utang. So, and, and the tuition fee for international students are mahal jugay compared to their locals. Maybe two, three times. But um, anyway, uh, God is good because um, 
uh, all our needs were provided and we were given strength um, day by day to uh, be able to work and study as well. Um, so even with restrictions and um, financial difficulties, okay, mahal ang tuition, um, we just we just kept going. We just kept our focus. And then, um, so um, my advice to you guys, um, so don't be disheartened or don't be um, discouraged by the tedious processing um, of, of um, coming here to Australia because it will be worth it. So um, um, can you imagine, as we do lots of nurses, you could be earning, like in your first year, you could be earning um, 200 thousand like a month so the you guys have philippines but um, but um um yeah so just just hang in there because the khan kay processing the khan kay shag mga um byronon face diri face dito pero sige lang aguanta lang na amoy utang diri na utang na po dito pero mabayaran na gid na siya and um just just don't quit because um even though the um, process is long or kapoy or gasto, but it will be, it'll be worth it. Because um, living here in Australia, this is, uh, this is a blessed country. Like, um, peaceful. Um, Dato na country, although mahal, pero kaya. Um, and then, uh, dili siya ang mga tao dili siya discriminative they are inclusive of of foreigners of, because this is a multicultural country so you won't feel nga discriminated ka because of your color because of your of your um of from where you are or because you, you're asian um yeah everyone is included and um so even your workmates uh from different from different background um, you won't feel you won't feel discriminated. So now my bullying dere, pero they have laws and policies about bullying, and you can assert your right. You can fight for your right. So um, dilit lang mo magkakulba just because nga lahi atong color or dilit kay tahod mo English, pero they won't mind it. They will they will understand us eventually. Um, and so, um, uh, one more thing, pagyud nga uh, my advice to you is, when you're when you're decided and when you're fully um, hearted, na you will proceed to the to coming to Australia, um, go go for it. O kanang dili na don't stall your application. Dili magpadugay because you know every year there's changes in the um, application uh, or visa application. So who knows? Um, Pwede ka karo apply but the next year dili na ka pwede. So, um, just be careful with the mga restrictions, sa mga uh, visa application. Be knowledgeable. Read, read, read. Read for yourself. Good. Na may uh, mga website, immigration website ang Australia. So, read for yourself para na put may background and you're not um, like walking in the dark. And um, lastly, keep praying you to Ginoo that he will um, sustain you, give you strength and good health and opportunities to this Australia para uh, maging success, successful put mo pareha na mo. And so um, that's all guys and thank you and see you when you get here. Bye.
One of the best feelings of life is having moments with the ones you love, even if you're far away from each other. Despite being a thousand miles apart, our feelings haven't changed. Being beside you is a wish that I've long desired. With professional help, the long wait is over. Bridge the gap with Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions. You can study, work, or live in Australia. With the help of our experts, you can fix your migration and visa application efficiently. Now, love doesn't have to be distant. Call us now. If you have a dream, chase for us and we'll go on down I will then make it over I will make it from me to ya We need a BPS Make a future bright We need a BPS Migration, education, for my way, my eyes Visit our website, amvpsolutions.info, and Facebook page, Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions.